and unleash beauty that you never knew existed in order to be at your best, both inside and out. Now, here is your host, Bonnie Bonadeo. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Beauty Inside and Out. Stand by here. I'm trying to pause the video. Uh, I'm excited today because you know what? This is the first day that I've actually felt warm in my new environment. This is summertime as far as I'm concerned, and I'm ready for summertime. But here's what I know to be true about summertime. My skin starts to get very dry, and I have a tendency to be in the sun too much and in pools and spas and hot tubs and everything. And so I am looking forward to talking with my guest today, and it's Ada Pola, and she is from Alchemy Forever, a skincare line out of uh, Switzerland that has a great story behind it. So Ada, I'm going to let you take it away here while I try and pause the other Facebook Live here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bonnie, for having me. Hi, everyone. Um, pardon me if I'm a bit nervous. This is my first such radio interview and first Facebook Live. I'm really excited. So Bonnie asked me to tell you a little bit about the story of my skincare brand, Alchemy, and it all starts with family and specifically with my father. I always tell people the luckiest thing that ever happened to me was to be born to my mom and dad. They're absolutely brilliant. And uh, my father happens to be a dermatologist, not any dermatologist. He is the best dermatologist in Switzerland, which is where I grew up. Um, I don't have a French accent, but if Bonnie is really nice to me and insists, I can turn it on a bit later for you. Um, but in any case, he has the um, privilege of being the first physician to bring laser technology to Europe. So he went to medical school in Switzerland and then attended National Hospital in Boston, which is part of the end of the U.S., and worked with Fox Anderson, who is a physician um, doctor credited for inventing lasers. He brought lasers back to Switzerland, and I promise you there's a point to this because it's all tied to how we got into skincare. He started treating children with port wine stains and hemangiomas. I don't know if you've seen that, but they're usually high in the cheeks. They can impact the eye area. Very dark, purple, wine-colored, red wine-colored stains, uh, birthmarks. Mm -hmm. And so he was treating these children um, and wanted a product that would help heal the skin post laser. So these are not the lasers of today that are lung, you know, lunchtime procedures, non-ablative. The first lasers were quite aggressive. This was also a very medical condition. And he couldn't find the right cream or the right product. And so he created what we still have, our very first product, the Cantic Brightening Moisture Mask. And it was a product that was meant to heal the skin, take the heat out of the skin that the laser had created, calm down redness, make the child feel better. So my father was really, is really still today, a doctor with an entrepreneurial edge. So he started making these products with a pharmacist, a chemist that we still work with. And what started happening is he would provide this product for, to the mothers who came with their children. And when the child came back for the second, third, fourth treatment, the mother ended up saying, well, I want one of these for myself as well because I've been putting it on my child and I also happen to use a little bit on myself because it smells so good. It smells like grapes or like blueberries and it feels so good and I'm seeing a glow in my skin and I'm seeing more beautiful skin and so can we get two jars instead of one? And so that is how we got into skincare products. It all started with that one product that was meant to help heal the skin for children. So my father was trying to do the best possible care for his patients, for the kids. And little by little, we started creating more products. And here we are today. I love that story. First of all, I love the story that your father um, being this high level dermatologist and, and he's still in Switzerland and still practicing, right? Yes, that's correct. My entire family is in Switzerland still. I am the lone, I'm called the American. Technically, I am now also American in addition to Swiss, but for the longest time, I was already the American. And we have a wonderful medical spa called Forever Laser Institute in Geneva. We also just opened a second, more kind of think of the blow dry bar for Medi Spa, so a more approachable version in Lausanne, which is about an hour outside of Geneva, uh, called Forever Boutique. And uh, my father still sees patients every day. The, you know, the joke is he will, well, it's not so funny, but he'll die in, in seeing a patient because he will never retire. He just loves to help people with their skin. He loves 
not just to you know do Botox or fillers and make you look younger. What he really loves is he feels that one, he's an artist, he's a painter, he is creating art by mm. creating beauty. And he's changing how you feel. You know, Bonnie, I mean, you look so wonderful. I'm sure you feel this. When you look good, you feel better about oh, yourself. Absolutely. Uh, I'm a big believer in that. You know? Yes. And it doesn't take much to pull it all together. But, you know, the reason why I called this show Inside a Beauty Inside and Out was because it really does. It resonates from the inside. But then mm -hmm. you still have to do all the right things on the outside. Yes. And what I find is it, it also has the, op, you know, it flows inside to out and it also flows outside to in. And by that, what I mean is I know, you know, when I look good, I actually behave better. I'm nicer. I <laughs> smile more. I, you know, I don't honk That's in my car great, so much. I don't get a great vulnerability to admit there. Anna. Yes. And so I think it's this beautiful virtuous circle where if you feel good, it shows on your face and you look better. And when you look better, you feel better and you behave better. And for me, I'm kinder. I'm just my, the best version of myself. And so we really think of what we're doing, not, only as making you look younger, but really as making you feel better and feel better about yourself and helping you be the best that you can be, which is all what you're about as well, Bonnie. It absolutely is. And, and I love that. And so your sisters are involved more into the Medispa arena of your, of your family business. Yes, that's right. I have three younger sisters. We are four girls. Um, people either say my father is a saint or <laughs> poor dad. <laughs> Um, it goes both ways and they are all involved in the business one way or another. Uh, the youngest just started as a vascular surgeon. She finished medical school this past summer in Geneva. So she's on the medical side of things. The idea is she will kind of take over our medical hat and the medical credibility and uh, the research part of things. And the two sisters in between her and I are involved in the medical spa side of the business, as you said. Um, my sister, Rachel, is actually the CEO of the spa, which technically makes her my father's boss, which makes for interesting family dynamics. Mm -hmm. And then my other sister is involved in all of the marketing and PR. So very much wow. a family business, two generations. It's a beautiful thing. So what brought you to the USA? So as I mentioned, uh, my father, after his medical school, worked at Mass General Hospital in Boston. So he was there for two years. I was six when we came and eight when we left. We lived in Brookline, which is a suburb of Boston. I went to public uh, school. And I have to tell you, these are the two best years of my childhood. Like all of my being a little kid memories I have from Boston. I remember making tie-dye t-shirts. I remember Miss Leslie, who was one of my professors. I remember learning English. It was just a wonderful formative two years. And ever since we left when I was eight and a half, I had told, I don't remember this, but I'm told this story by my parents. I told my mom as we were getting on the plane to go back to Switzerland that I would come back for school. And so I eventually, you know, I, I this happened and I went to the international school in Geneva and then I came back and I went to Harvard uh, for college. And what was supposed to be four years, that was in 95 when I came back. I mean, and then I never left. And I just I stayed in Boston for many years. I love Boston. Um, and then I moved in 2002 to Washington, D.C., which is where I'm speaking to you from, where our offices are. Mm -hmm. And I went to Georgetown Business School here, and I just, I love D.C. I feel like it's my home. Oh, perfect. Good. <clears throat> well, I think that's a great story, and I, I'm, I'm glad to be able to share then a little bit more about Alchemy Forever, because this is a, this is not just a family business, but this is a line that you're going to really see some nice results on. And um, I think that everything that you've put together up to this point and everything that you've shared, you know, skincare is big business. It's a big part of beauty. And I think that as a consumer, and I'm putting myself in that category, we get really confused as to what we should, should not be doing, what makes something good, what makes something not good. So I look forward to hearing a little bit more about all of that as we kind of progress into our show. Um, yes. today. So I think that, you know, I grew up in Europe until I came to the U.S. And I think that there's a very um, interesting difference in terms of the skincare culture in Europe and in the U.S. And mm -hmm. um, for many things, you know, I, I take from the U.S. and bring to Europe. But this is something that I really feel we can learn from Europeans. So the idea of prevention is really important in European 
skincare. I remember the first time that my grandmother took me to get a facial. My grandmother took me. I was 15. And she said, you know, now you're a young lady. This is part of what you need to do for your self-care, for your health care. Like it's not considered she-she. It's not considered reserved for the ladies who lunch. It is just part of what you do for yourself. And I'd like to equate it when I talk to customers here to oral care in the US, you know? So think of oral care. We're obsessed with oral care in this country, which is a beautiful thing. You brush your teeth twice a day. This means you would cleanse your skin twice a day. You don't wait for your teeth to rot until you go to the dentist. You go to the dentist a couple times a year as prevention. This would be equating it to getting, you know, going to your dermatologist, getting your moles checked, getting your face checked. You get a professional cleaning once in a while. That would be getting your facial done by a, a cosmetologist, a skincare therapist a couple times a year. And all of this we do for all oral care with this idea of having our teeth for as long as possible, healthy, mm. white, and beautiful. And for skincare, I talk to a lot of women and I mean, I, I just turned 40 this past year, so I'm starting to be guilty of such, but they're like, look, I have this wrinkle. It just arrived. I'm like, no, it did not just arrived. It's been probably 25 years in the making. You're just <laughs> happen to see it today. And they're like, well, I want it gone. I'm like, well, it was 25 years in the making. So thinking that a cream can take this wrinkle and overnight make it go away, it's not really, you know, it's not really possible. And so trying to teach skincare, I think, to our daughters, to our goddaughters, to the young women and men that are in our lives is really important. And to teach it not as something that's she-she and superfluous, but really as something that is very basic and part of self-care, if for nothing else, to apply sunscreen and prevent skin cancer, which you know people die of, unfortunately, every year. So yeah. that's really the philosophy, you know, how we approach skincare. Yeah, and I, I think that's, I think that's a beautiful way to be able to look at it. And of course, you look very youthful. So whatever you're using, and I'm sure it's all she forever, you look really good. And that is, that is a testament to, you know, the product and and the opportunities for other people as well. I like the way you use the analogy with the oral care because you know I, I think we take it for granted that you know we're very in the USA we're very fixated on having good teeth and straight teeth, mm -hmm. clean teeth and white teeth and you know the celebrities. It's like you know they saw their teeth down and put in fake teeth to have better teeth. So yes. it's it, it's a good analogy to be able to do that. And I know that one of the things that. <clears throat> that I started was, you know, at 16, I started a skincare regime and have been faithful to it for all these years. And it does make a difference. And for most of my life, I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. So a very hot, very dry, very dry, very dry climate. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm thinking I'm going to take about five years off my skin living in Atlanta. Yes, you will. They're, dry climates, I must say, are, you know, people say they're so great for hairstyles. They're not so good for skin. Not so good for the skin. Yeah, yeah. no, because, no. you know, the freckling, the sun damage, uh, the, just the lines show up more. You just can't keep hydrated enough to be able to do that. So I've already noticed a difference in my skin going from very dry to a little bit oily being in a more humid environment. Uh -huh. And so I'm having to make those adjustments as well in regards to my skincare and you know, how I typically was, was, um, you know, very cream based and soft with everything. Now I can see that, no, I gotta, I gotta do a little bit more cleansing. Yes. Now in the, in the, um, the arena of Medi spas, how does that differ? How do you see that differing over in Europe compared to here? I think, um, there are both similarities and differences. So I think that um, in the similarities, you know, the, the range of treatments is very comparable. Botox, fillers, peels. Uh, we actually do a lot of work on the body, which um, is a slight difference. I feel like a, a, oftentimes here people really think of, you know, this. Right. First, of, first of all, my father says your skin does your face doesn't end here. You know, it ends right here. So this is part of the face. But over beyond that, even it's really about thinking of the person as a whole, mm -hmm. um, not just thinking about face. So while the treatments are similar, um, it is you know we do a lot of work on the body. I also think again this piece about prevention is also relevant to Medi Spa, where the customer that we see starts a little bit earlier. She's a little bit younger. She's coming in before everything needs to be repaired. 
Um, she, you know, she's not waiting until the day that she wants a facelift. We don't do facelifts, but we work with a great plastic surgeon if that's what you choose to do. But we work a lot on the small, minimal improvements where no one would ever ask you, oh, wow, where did you get your lips done? But mm -hmm. someone would say, wow, you look really wonderful. Did you, you know, have a vacation or something like that? So that approach is also a little bit different. You know, and I think that if the, if like you said, the prevention and the maintenance started out at an earlier age, I think that these, this younger generation of young women, you know, them in their twenties, they're not going to feel so obligated to be pumping up their lips and putting Botox on and, you know, uh, those other kind of treatments that it might be too soon for them to be doing those type of things. Yes. I think also another difference that I see in the skincare culture between Europe and the, or I should say Switzerland and, and the United States is, you know, one of my favorite things, which I only do after asking for permission is to go look in your bathroom vanity closet, because I love to see what people have. <laughs> I don't care about the medications, the prescriptions and the pills. I just want to see the products. And so in Europe, it's about 70% skin, skin and body care. So moisturizers, eye creams, serums, sun care, mm -hmm. and 30% makeup and hair care. So think, you know, lipsticks, eyeshadow, hairspray, what have you. And here in the US, it's quite reversed. It is 70% hair care and makeup and 30% on a good day of treatment skin care. And, you know, it's again the same. I think about some of my girlfriends who I love dearly who go and get blowouts a couple times a month. They get their color done every month. They're religious about their hair care. They're persnickety about the products that they use but they don't have that same feeling towards their skin. And you know, hair grows, you can cut it, you can color it, you can shave it off if you want, it will come back. Your skin is not, does not do that. Like you can't do that with your skin. All you can do with your skin is treat it and know that until the day you die, the skin that you're in is the skin that you have and that you're gonna have in 20, 10, 20, 30 years, the skin that you deserve based on how you're treating it today. And yeah. yes, you can, you, know, you can enhance it with MediSpa treatments and what have you, but still, it's not like you can cut it off and grow new skin. It doesn't really, that doesn't no, really because, work. Yeah, and, that's, and again, an, another great analogy because, you know, I can have extensions added to my hair. I can change my hair color, um, but I, I really have to love and trust the skin that I am in and protect it to the best that I can. Now, a um, couple things, because we're going to go to break here in just a minute. When we come back in this next segment, I, I definitely want to hear why why and how Alchemy Forever is a little bit unique and different. Um, and then, you know, I, I heard a conversation the other day that Hawaii may be the first state to ban sunscreens. Um, and so I want to uh, touch on that a little bit because, you know, we've been, we've been harping on people, you know, to use sunscreen. And, and frankly, I can't imagine being in Hawaii and not being able to have sunscreen you know, and I understand that it's, you know, part of the eco culture and everything. Yes. But I would burn to death. I would burn to death without having some kind of protection. And the same with my face. If I'm not applying good sunscreen every day, moisturizers, and then even the makeup that I use, I feel is, is a protectant. Um, I'm, I, I'm setting myself up for damaged skin, skin cancer, um, and definitely aging. Yes. Effects. We can talk about all of that. Perfect. Good. So we are going to take a quick break right now. Um, be, uh, we're going to stay live on Facebook, everybody. So stay with us. And if you are listening and you'd like to join us on Facebook, you can find me at uh, facebook.com slash Bonnie Bonadeo. And that's how you can join us in a live chat. And we'll be able to take questions. Uh, uh, yeah, please share with us, you know, your skincare regimes. What's your favorite product? We want to hear it all. So stay with us. We'll be right back. All clear. Thank you. Hey, everybody on Facebook. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, I've got it pulled up here, so I'm looking forward to being able to see if anybody has any questions and you're interested in uh, jumping on board. Uh, yep, so we have Gloria who says, I agree. I wash my hair and style it, and I feel so much better. Same goes with my skin, keeping it cleansed and moisturized. Um, everybody is, yep, we got some good comments here. They're liking what we're sharing so far. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yes, Aaron, and thank you for your comments. Christian, Santo. Perfect, yeah. So please let us know if you have questions, comments, 
Let us know what your regime is. I want to know too, based on what you shared, Ada, um, that, you know, what does your cupboard or your cabinet look like? I would say, I would say mine is probably a 60, 40, 60, 40. Cause I'm like a skincare freak. Like I see something I like, or I hear a friend recommend something I'm buying it, I'm using it. Um, but I probably, I, well, we'll share it when we get back from this break, um, as well. But I think I get overwhelmed by too many products and then I end up just going back to the basics. Yes. And, and I, it, having skincare sit for a really long time. Uh -huh. There's a, you know, the basics and the, the max and you have to find the right balance. And sometimes some days the basics are for you and sometimes you want to do the max and they're both great. Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. Thanks for coming back. You are listening to Beauty Inside and Out with Bonnie Bonadeo. If you have a question or comment about our show, please send an email to bonnie at bonniebonadeo.com. That's bonnie at bonniebonadeo.com. Now back to Beauty Inside and Out. Welcome back, everybody. We're Facebook Live, too, so I hope that you can join us on Facebook Live at, at uh, Bonnie Bonadeo. I am here with my guest, Ada Pola. She's the CEO of Alchemy Forever, and she shared earlier that, you know, it's a family business. Her father is a, is a well-known dermatologist in Switzerland. Her sisters, three other sisters, um, are all involved in the business in some way. And although she's a part of the day-to-day -day operations of the organization, she also finds time to be involved in several ventures. So the Washington Spa Alliance, Fashion Group International, um, and you serve on the board and the founding members of, uh, of a lot of those respectively. But you also were very involved in, in uh, providing content and information to some of the industry's best magazines. Um, and I was sharing with Ada on the break here, I said, you know, I probably have a 60-40 blend, 60% 60 hair, 40% skincare, but I find myself getting um, overwhelmed by too many different products that I'm not quite sure how to use or when to use. And then of course the print on a skincare product is like, you know, minute. And, um, and I think I just kind of go, oh, I don't know if it's day or night and I just kind of set it aside. So I probably have a lot of skincare that I could be using and should be using. Um, but I'm a little overwhelmed by it. So I definitely want to hear about Alchemy Forever and the line and what makes it unique. Yes, thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. So in a couple words, um, what makes us unique is really how we began. And so you mentioned this, my father, the world of lasers, healing the skin post-treatment. And so from the start, we were about healing. We were about calming redness, calming irritation, um, soothing the skin, being very anti-inflammatory. And if there's a word I'd like for you to remember, it really is this anti-inflammatory products. So inflammation comes in many shapes and sizes. It affects not only the skin, but at the level of the skin, inflammation is what we call in the medical world a pro-ager. It accelerates aging. Mm -hmm. And so we really, from the start, wanted to focus on quelling inflammation, and that's how we approach anti-aging. This is also what makes our brand, our products so adequate, not just for kids, which is, you know, our first audience, our first consumer were these children who were as young as one, one and a half years old, but um, women and men with sensitive, sensitized skin, rosacea, redness, eczema, uh, irritation, reactive skin, if you're going through chemo or any very strong uh, medical treatments that show up in your skin, if you have developed a gluten intolerance, that is making your skin sensitive and sensitized. So all of those groups of skin that's not very happy, the unhappy skin people out there, our brand is really uh, ideal for you. Mm -hmm. So we, we blend this anti-aging with anti-inflammatory approach. Um, and Bonnie, you said something very interesting, which is uh, the print on this, you know, the size of the print on jars. You would be surprised how many comments we get that we need to make our print larger. We need to make our print larger. It is something that we work on um, continually. And it's, I'm sure. yeah. And you know, we love to hear the feedback from our consumers. It's one of my favorite parts of my jobs. I still get copied on all of the emails that get sent to the customer service at alchemy-forever.com email because that, that's my joy, mostly joy. Sometimes I don't like the emails, but mostly I love them. <laughs> um, and it's thanks to feedback from our customers, from our users that we you know, can improve both the packaging, but also the, the products. 
Yeah, I think it's important, you know, if the product is easeful to get out and it's easeful to remember how, where, and when to use, I will use it. I will be faithful to it. Yes. Um, but, you know, it's like I picked up this one and it had a descriptive name that I was like, ooh, is this something I should use before I go to bed? Is it going to irritate me if I use it, you know, underneath my makeup? Um, and then I found occasionally I have sensitivities to... Um, uh, what's that one? Retinol. Yes. I'm having sensitivities to retinol. So now I'm having to check the labels and see, you know, is there retinol in this product? And, you know, yes. I and I think, you know, you say um, you have some products that perhaps you're not using as, let's say, diligently as you should. Um, yes. what, one of the things that my mother always said is, you know, this product is not going to do you any good unless it actually gets on your skin. And so I would encourage everyone who's listening uh, a couple tips in terms of products. One, there's really, I mean, we have day creams and night creams and what have you, but there's really no wrong way to go except to remember one thing, which is any product that contains SPF, you should not use in the evening. That's a pretty hard and fast rule. So okay. SPF, any, anything with SPF, evening. do not use at night. That's exclusively a morning product. Uh, the other one you mentioned, um, retinol. So retinol is an incredible ingredient. It really helps to build collagen. It's probably the gold standard ingredient for fine lines and wrinkles. It is quite irritating. You have it in different um, you know, concentrations, but that is also an evening product because it irritates the skin. You don't want to put retinol on in the morning and then go in the sun. Mm, so, so that's SP going to create even more sensitivities. Yes. So SPF only in the morning, retinol only in the evening. Most other products you can not really go wrong with. Um, and then in terms of tips and tricks to make sure that, you know, you're spending time and money picking out and purchasing these products for your skin. And so you want to be using them. One is make sure they're actually out on your, you know, near where you have your, your toothbrush, your toothpaste, because then you see them. If they're on the other side of the bathroom in some cupboard somewhere, you're not going to see them. They're not going to be top of mind. You're not going to use them. So keep them near your toothbrush, toothpaste, back to the oral care idea. Mm -hmm. It's exactly how I have mine set up. And um, the products that I have to remember to use, um, I literally take a Velcro and stick them to my mirror. Yeah. So you can do that. That's a great tip. I've never heard that, but that yeah. definitely works. And then the other thing, something that I do is I actually have some of my products on my nightstand. Um, the ones that I reserve for evening, um, you know, a lot of people think about hand, hand, hand or hand and foot cream, certainly, but you can do that with facial products. I have our rejuvenating eye balm is on my nightstand. It's probably the last thing I do before I go to bed. Wait, no, that's check my phone. So before that, <laughs> <laughs> the, the penultimate thing I do before I go to sleep is, you know, to put on our rejuvenating eye balm. And it doesn't matter if I'm doing it while I'm in bed. It's very easy. I don't need a mirror, you know, just a little bit of eye cream right there. So you can also use that area. And then I was talking to one of our customers the other day. We have this great gel for neck and bust. You know, as I was saying, my father is very adamant about the fact that your face ends right at your bust line. Your face does not end at your chin. And so this is a, a product that helps this area match your face. So it helps, you know, to make sure that everything is saying one single age. And she was telling me that she purchased it and loves it and oftentimes forgets to put it on. And so she put it in her clothes closet right next to her t-shirts. So she has a shelf with her t-shirts and then right next to it, she has that product. And so she knows when she's going into her closet to put on her t-shirt, she's like, oh, I have to put this product on first. So all these little tricks mm. to help you position your products where you're most likely to remember them and to use them, we'll make sure that you actually get to put them onto where they go. Yes. And I, and I love the idea that you say that it ends here because honestly, you know, this, this is the, this is the age giveaway. Yes. Right here. Your right. neck is the age giveaway. And, and right the here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The hands. In the hands. I try to, I try to disguise them both as much as possible. <laughs> yes. There's a, there's a Chinese proverb with which my father quotes a lot that says, uh, the hands are a woman's second face. And it's very true. And, you know, we don't take care of the hands the way that we take care of our faces. And so protecting the hands, um, with, you know, SPF, protecting the hands with good product that also have antioxidant and anti-aging properties, making sure we wear gloves when it's cold. Um, 
all of that, even, you know, you were asking about Medispa treatments. There are some really good treatments, injectables for the top of the hands. As we age, we lose collagen and that becomes very visible in the hands where they seem mm -hmm. all wrinkly and they become a little bit more veiny. Um, so it really is, you know, the neck and decollete and the back of the hands need as much attention as our faces for sure. Uh, I, I think that's, I think that's a really good idea to keep something in the closet. Um, and you know, after you're done moisturizing, put the remainder on the back of your hands. Cause yes. I'm not, I don't like a lot of, uh, lotions on my hands. I don't like the way that that feels a lot of times. Um, but you know, also I have the results of not using a lot of lotions and everything on my hands. So absolutely. We're hiding that's the our hands. Yes, that's a really good trick. Anything you put on your face, if you have any extra, don't wipe it on your bathroom towel. Your towel doesn't need that, but really put it, you know, on the back of the hands. It's a, it's a really great, great, great tip. Yeah, perfect. So I'm on your website right now, which is um, uh, Alchemy Forever of Switzerland. So alchemy-forever.com and alchemy is spelt like what's behind uh, Otter right now, but for everybody that's on the radio that cannot, it's A-L-C-H-I-M-I-E forever. Um, and I'm liking the words that you got going on here, like gluten free, um, paraben free. And I know we hear a lot about this in regards to skincare, but how does some of these ingredient ingredients really affect us if they are in the products we're using? You know, this is a very interesting question. And I think, um, being the daughter of two Western trained medical doctors and having kind of been steeped in the world of science, I want to be very careful how I answer this because uh, while we strive as an industry to create products that make you look better and make you feel better and the overall goal of this entire industry is positive, you know, and has to do with feeling better. Um, there are some organizations that I feel focus very much on fear and on a little bit of misinformation. And I think mm -hmm. as a, as a customer, as a user, as a non-industry person, one of the biggest challenges that I see is really where to get information, who is giving that information, what is the agenda behind the information, if any. So having said that as a preface, I would also say the beautiful thing about this industry is that that the science continues to evolve. Oh, yeah. and, and you know, parabens are very poo-pooed and most brands don't use them anymore. When we started, we used parabens, we reformulated, we are now paraben free. When we started with parabens, we didn't use them because we were evil or are evil. We used them because at that time, the level of knowledge suggested that they were the best, safest, and most studied preservatives and including in food and in skincare. But like I said, the, the, the knowledge base evolves and that's what makes the industry interesting. In terms of, you know, things that you want to stay away from, parabens, like I said, most brands don't use anymore. Gluten-free is not something that's necessarily bad for everybody, but gluten-free is very important to people who are gluten intolerant. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you have celiac disease or if you're developing a gluten intolerance that is an oral problem, the fact that you can find gluten-free skincare products is important because that will irritate the the skin. Um, we also choose to be cruelty free. We are certified by Leaping Bunny and by PETA. Um, so this involves not just how we formulate and where we test. We test on humans, not animals, very lucky humans. Um, but also the suppliers, the raw material uh, ingredient suppliers that we work with and our manufacturers' uh, best practices. Um, so we, we try to create products that are efficacious, medically formulated, and that are you can feel good about. You know, the, we're not 100% natural. We are not organic. Like my father likes to say, poison ivy is 100% natural. Is that something you want on your skin? No. So we really think about blending safe botanicals, safe naturals with safe synthetics. And the idea that all synthetics are bad is also not something that we prescribe to. I mean, my father injects Botox. Botox is a synthetic. You know, he prescribes medications, sometimes oral medications that are synthetically made. Synthetics can enhance what nature is providing for us. And that is kind of where we stand, where again, we're blending safe botanicals with safe synthetics. You know, it, you're really right about that, Ada, that the science and the technology in skincare has advanced so much over the last few years alone. Um, 
and the way that products can penetrate, the way that we can break down products to a different molecular structure to be able to do the work that it's designed to be able to do. So it's not, you're right, it's not about just being natural. It, it is about looking at something that is still safe, effective, but also provides the results that we're looking for. Yes. And you know, you brought something during the break when we were having a little chat, you brought something up very interesting, which is the recent regulation in Hawaii. So for those of you who are not aware, this just uh, was last week, I believe Hawaii is the first state to ban not sunscreens, but two specific sunscreen ingredients, mm. octinoxite and oxybenzone. And um, the reason that they ban this is for the environment. It's actually not so much for human skin and what it does to human skin. It's more for the environment as a whole and the coral reefs and the water and what have you. How you know this will impact the rest of the, of the United States, we don't know yet. These are not specifically for us. This is not relevant because we do have a a day cream with SPF, but those two specific ingredients we do not use. Um, but that's an exact example of the evolution of, mm. of the knowledge and of the science behind ingredients. And it's not to say that the brands that use these ingredients are bad brands mm. or trying to be harmful. They are doing what they, they're making the decisions, they made, had made those decisions based on the facts that they had when they made those decisions. And so, of course, now, you know, things will evolve and a lot of brands will reformulate just like a lot of brands reformulated when parabens were deemed to be un unsafe. Um, so it's this constant evolution, which is keeps the industry interesting and also keeps it quite confusing for the non-industry consumer. Yeah, and, and it is. And it's not because those ingredients are bad. They're bad for the coral. And so if you can imagine millions of visitors every year, you know, taking a dip into a uh, coral reef to go snorkeling, the, mm -hmm. they've seen the damage, they have proof of the damage. And so what they're trying to do is prevent more damage to the ecosystem and the coral reefs themselves. Um, and I think that is gonna force these, these companies to be able to look at some reformulations that are going to be more effective to our environment and protect us from the sun. Right. I mean, of course, we don't want to be banning sunscreen. I mean, you know, sunscreen is absolutely essential. My father always said, if nothing else, apply every morning a moisturizer that contains antioxidants and an SPF and you will age mm -hmm. gracefully. If you do nothing else, do that and you will age gracefully. And so, of course, sunscreen is important. It's just how are we formulating it and what ingredients are we using? Yeah, that's really good. So um, I wanted to, when we come back from this next break, I want to be able to talk about some of the products and, and a very, you know, a, a simple regime that people can take on and, you know, which ones are your favorites? Which ones are your go-tos and you never can live without? Um, yes. And get us familiar with your product line so we can um, uh, put together our own regime for home use and look as good as you do. Thank you. Uh, I would stay, love that. <laughs> stay with us, everybody. We'll be right back. And if you want to join us on social media, you can go to Beauty Inside and Out Show uh, on Facebook, Instagram, Beauty In Out, on Twitter. Um, and of course, if you want to reach out to me and you're interested in being a guest or an advertiser or sponsor, you can contact me uh, via email at bonnie at bonniebonadeo.com. We'll be right back. All clear. Thank you. All right, Ada, that was good stuff. I'm telling you, let's see what we got. We got some comments here. Um, all good. Everybody seems to be liking it and on board with it. Well, so, thank you, everybody. Yeah, I'm excited to be able to um, hear a little bit about the products and, you know, which ones are the ones that we really need to be going to that go-to and and I'm going to ask you too, and I and I know for our Facebook people here, you're going to, you'll answer it when we get back on uh, the the air with the radio but um you know can the product when you say that the face does not end here and it goes here is the same product good from top to bottom should we be using other things or do you, does your line have other things that are designed for that so keep 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 that for now until we go back on the radio so we can talk about some of these products here Wonderful. and again everybody that uh for that's with us on facebook live here you can you can um, check out the website at um, al alchemy-forever.com. Thank you. I'm going to poke around on your website here and see some of something I like. 
Pigment Lightening Serum. Mm -hmm. mm, it's one of my favorites. I bet it is. Mm -hmm. I think that, yeah, because it's I, I'm reaching that age where the skin is becoming um, uneven, we shall say. Yes. And spotty. Shop by Concern. Okay, this is a really good uh, feature to your website here. Shop by Concern. I love that because you're looking at what's the problem you're having and what are our products. And what's the solution? Mm-hmm. That's brilliant. Love that. Yeah, my, uh, my son's been dealing with some acne. Um, he's 19 and mm -hmm. he's been dealing with some acne and you know, nothing's really worked. And he ended up going with, um, that benzoid peroxide directly. Yeah. I'm thinking, ah, you need to be using something else to kind of offset Yes, dryness that that's creating. So maybe you can recommend a product when we come back. Um, Here we go. To that. You are listening to Beauty Inside and Out with Bonnie Bonadeo. If you have a question or comment about our show, please send an email to Bonnie at BonnieBonadeo.com. That's Bonnie at BonnieBonadeo.com. Now back to Beauty Inside and Out. Hey everybody, welcome back. I've got my guest here, Ada Pola. She's the CEO of Alchemy Forever. And um, she has shared with us some really great tips, um, first of all, on how we can preserve and be more preventative with our skin. Um, and she's about to share with us a few more tips in regards to what we can do to age gracefully, how to be able to put that simple regime together and commit to it so that we can have a beautiful skin for a lifetime. Yes, this is my favorite topic, so thank you for asking that. <laughs> so first of all, two rules that are not product related. One is do not smoke, and two is stay out of the sun. Um, you know, what accelerates skin aging and what causes skin aging are free radicals, and free radicals are driven primarily by the sun and by cigarette smoke. So you avoid those two and you're, you're on a good skincare journey. Now, in terms of skincare routine, the most minimalist, most basic skincare routine involves two steps. One is cleansing, two is moisturizing. So as you are getting into your skincare routine, as you are uh, and moving away from not taking your makeup off at night, as you're graduating from makeup wipes, makeup wipes is not equal to cleansing, please ladies. Um, <laughs> think, of, think of those two steps. I know, I'm sorry to break it to you. So a good, a good cleanser in the evening to get the day off your face, to remove excess sebum, to remove sweat, to remove your makeup, to remove the pollution from the day is absolutely essential. You can cleanse again in the morning if you shower in the morning, if you wish or not. And then a good moisturizer morning and evening. So ideally, those are two different products because ideally your morning moisturizer will have SPF right. and your evening moisturizer should not have SPF. So one cleanser, one morning moisturizer with sunscreen and one evening moisturizer without sunscreen and you are good. So three products, two steps. Now, as you get more and more into your skincare, you want to add treatment, okay? Right now, we've only done cleanse and moisturize, so you want to add treatment. So treatment typically would start in the eye area, and my father always said, if you're old enough to drink, you're old enough for a good eye cream, because <laughs> I like all his philosophies. I mean, I told you, when we started, the best thing that ever happened to me is who I have for parents. Yeah. So, uh, you know, aging will happen right here, because the skin under the eyes is thinner than everywhere else on the face, and so it's like the neck of the skin, uh, the skin of the neck, which you were mentioning. So a good eye cream is a great third step to add in terms of treatment. And then my personal favorite step, which I do probably three or four, uh, which is a bit excessive, is the serum step. I love a serum. A serum for, you know, I often get the question, well, what's a serum? Why is a serum a serum and a moisturizer a moisturizer? So a serum is typically very problem targeted. A moisturizer hydrates your skin, it's your maintenance. A serum will fix a problem. So is your problem brown spots? Is your problem dryness? Is your problem redness? Is your problem wrinkles? So for each of these problems, you will have a serum, a treatment product. So I love, for example, our pigment lightening serum is a product I can't live without. I use it morning and evening before my moisturizer. Always treatment first, moisturize second. Okay, um, and put them on top of each other. Yes, you layer them. Um, and in general, the rule of product is that you go from thin 
to thick. So think a serum is typically thinner in texture. If you have a toner, you would do that before you do your moisturizer. If you have an oil, a facial oil, you would typically do that after your moisturizer because that's even thicker. Mm -hmm. um, so you layer them. So, you know, if you want to get to the four product, you would have cleanser, eye cream, serum, moisturizer. And mm -hmm. that is a pretty um, good skincare routine. Like if I see that in your vanity, I I'm very proud. Mm -hmm. Good. I passed. Yes, you <laughs> passed. And then in addition to that, there's two other product categories to talk about. One is your weekly treatment. So you want to exfoliate and mask on a weekly basis. Our gentle refining scrub is amazing. And like I was speaking at the beginning, our Cantic Brightening Moisture Mask is the very first product that we ever created. And it's still a hero product and top seller. And so you want to help your skin shed the dead skin. Uh, shed the dead cells. And so that's the purpose of an exfoliator. It will help to reveal brighter skin. A scrub will also make all your other products work better because then they actually can penetrate to where they're going. Yeah. Yes. And, and then your mask, you want to pick again based on your concerns. So are you oily and very acne prone? You want a clay mask that will pull things out of your skin. Or are you very dry, dehydrated and sensitive? Then you want a creamy base mask that will act like a big glass of water for your skin. And so your weekly step is really that treatment step um, that you want to, to have. And then lastly, there's the products for other areas. So forget again, you know, chin to forehead, what are you doing here? So at the very least, mm -hmm. um, you want to use the products that you're using on your face, always bring them down to the neck. Ideally, you're using a product that is specific to the neck and decollete area. Um, but again, you can do it both. You can start by just bringing your moisturizer down into the neck, and then you can graduate to having a product such as our Firming Gel for Neck and Bust, which is a wonderful product for this area. Mm -hmm. So um, so we have one question here that came up from a listener, and they're asking about getting rid of blackheads and preventing them from showing. What would be the ideal products you'd recommend there? Yes. Yeah, so blackheads are this very pesky thing. You want to make sure that you have very a very good cleansing routine, but not be too aggressive. So it doesn't mean, it's not because you have blackheads that you want to, for example, scrub three times a week, four times a week. No, because you'll end up aggravating your skin, but you want to make sure that you are cleansing every day, that you are exfoliating once to twice a week gently. You also want to make sure that the products that you're applying to your skin, whether it be your makeup, your sunscreen, or your skincare products, don't have any silicones or silicone derivatives in it, in it which tend to clog pores. Um, and then you want to make sure that you are not picking at your skin and you're not, um, you know, giving yourself extractions because that will lead to not good things that will lead to scarring. And I know I, I have enlarged pores on my nose. I've never had a day in my life where I don't have pores on my nose. I've learned to live with them and minimize them, but do not pick at them. So good cleansing routine, gentle exfoliation twice a week, and making sure that the products that you're applying to your skin that are staying on your skin are free of silicones and silicone derivatives and lighter in texture. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and I like the way that you just simplified that cleansing, moisturizing, you know, and then treatments and then daily and weekly. So that kind of makes it very, makes it all very manageable. When you're talking about the exfoliation is, I know that there's a lot of products out there now that are kind of, um, not retinol, but, um, they call it, they're like microdermabrasions or, um, yeah. So there's two types of exfoliation. You have physical exfoliation or mechanical exfoliation, which is where you're, you feel. So it's little beads or it's, you know, sandpaper, not that you want sandpaper, but or microdermabrasion falls in that category. And then you have chemical exfoliation, which is typically done with acids, whether it be fruit acids or um, synthetic acids. It's two different types where in chemical exfoliation, the acid dissolves the dead skin. In physical exfoliation, the physical particle lifts off the dead skin from the, from the face. Mm -hmm. And you know, both are great. Um, some people just have a personal preference for glycolics or salicylic acid. Some people prefer something that feels more gritty. The important thing is one, to do it, and two, not to overdo it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like okay. finding this right middle. Yeah. So both of my parents have gone through skin cancer on their face 
and mm -hmm. you know along the hairline um, and then going down into this area here in their decollete. Um, and so they've had surgery, they've had it cut out. I mean, it's, it, it's big, it's b big stuff here. Yeah. Um, so I get, you know, I get facial peels, glycolic peels um, yep. every quarter to be able to just kind of continue to keep exfoliating that because certainly I have the sun damage that they have. I'm just trying to be preventative to it when I reach that age that it's not sitting there um, accumulating into skin cancer. Yes, for sure. That's a great, uh, I think of that as skin hygiene to have. And of course, remembering sunscreen every day, mm -hmm. even, even in the winter, even when you're not going out in the sun, even if it's cloudy, UV goes through cloud cover, really an SPF of 20 or above for every single day, January 1 to December 31st, regardless of what you're doing will help not only will help you age more gracefully, but also will help prevent skin cancer. Yeah, so skincare is an important um, regime that we need to keep doing, and it does make a difference because, you know, we are, I'm putting makeup on my face just about every day, so I'm like clogging my pores with makeup, and if I'm not cleansing them, um, and I do get, I, I get crazy if people don't wash their face at night. Like, you got to wash your face at night. You would be surprised at what's on your face at night. <laughs> you think you get crazy? You should see me when I'm told that someone doesn't wash their face. I'm like, I, I, I can't even go there. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, yeah. I mean, I remember the days when I was traveling a lot with organizations and they put us, they had to share rooms and I'd be like, oh my God, brush your teeth and wash your face. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. I was like sure they, they are thankful for your good advice. Yes, yeah, I tried to be delicate about it, but I'm just thinking, yeah, and so I, it's the same thing, you know, with, in raising children. It's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta be preventative with all this stuff. Now, I know you have a special for our listeners, um, yes. and I'm gonna put this on Facebook as well after the show, but can you let us know what that special is and how we can take advantage and find this yes. al al Alchemy products? Yes, in, as a sign of gratitude for all of those of you out there listening and commenting, if you are interested in ordering our products on our website, which is alshimi-forever.com, you enter the code BONNIE15, which is B-O-N-N-I-E, the number one, the number five. BONNIE is all caps, and that will give you a 15% discount off of your first order. Um, you know, my goal in life is to make sure everyone has the best skin possible. And I like to think that our products contribute to that. So the more I'm able to get our products in the hands, in your hands, the, the happier I am. Perfect. So it's, uh, I'll repeat the website here, www.alchemyforever, A-L-C-H-I-M-I-E dash forever.com. And you can put in the code Bonnie 15, all caps. Um, and that will provide you a 15% discount off of your first order. So that's wonderful. Thank you for being generous to all of our listeners and giving them an opportunity to be able to try the products. And Ada, thank you so much for being with us. I look forward to trying them and uh, adding them to my regime and getting, getting, I'll pull some other stuff out, put yours in there and uh, try to look as youthful as you. Uh, well, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for having me. You bet, yeah. So everybody, thanks for joining us today. And you know, as, as uh, some of you may have heard or some of you have noticed that we are on Zoom as, as an opportunity. So, you know, the radio show just kind of like grew up and became an adult here and now we're on video as well. So if there's opportunities for you to want to be a guest with us, um, or to be able to and share your story, products, or company, we'd love to have you on uh, Beauty Inside and Out. And of course, you can reach out to me through social, or you can email me, Bonnie, at BonnieBonadeo.com. Now, next week, we actually have, we have a, we have a great show next week. We're kind of going a little bit more to the inside, and we have uh, Dr. John West, and he is a breast surgeon. And he is all about being preventative for women with breast cancer. And he's got some really great tips for us. He just wrote a book on it. So we're going to be launching his book as well. Um, and to be able to share with us, because listen, I got girlfriends that are coming, you know, be, getting diagnosed with breast cancer at way too early of an age. Um, and it's not about uh, mammograms at 50 anymore. It's mammograms at 40. So stay tuned for us next week. And we'll hear Dr. John West. And uh, he'll share with us everything we need to know. Ada, thank you again for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. And as always, ever rem remember to be you in beauty. All clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, Ada. Thank you so much, Bonnie.